So in the last class, we have already completed the groundwater, rocks, and minerals. Today we have to complete the only left uh, thing of this particular unit, that is the soil. So soil we have to start today, and we will end it by the mid of this class, and then we will start the pollution chapter. And we will start the noise pollution today. Then we will go towards the water and air pollution one by one, and then the pollution chapter would be completed as well. So Let's start with the soil. So soil is a mixture of organic matter, minerals, gases, liquid, and organisms that together support life. Earth's body of soil called the pedosphere. So pedosphere is what? Pedosphere is the soil layer of the earth surface. And what is soil? Soil is made of the organic matter and the inorganic matter. Inorganic matter is your minerals. Then we have the gases and liquids. If you talk about the general, Proposition of the different percentage of these four matters. So that is combining 50% of the or 25% uh, of the organic matter we have, 25% of the inorganic matter we have, 20-25% both of gases and liquid we have also. So that is general uh, kind of you can say classification of these different constituents of the soil. And of of course we have very little amount of the soil microorganisms as, as well, which is very important or very, very essential in the soil science or in the soil. And what is the pedology? So as we have discussed the other limnology and then with the petrology, similarly, we have the pedology and pedology is what? Pedology is the study of the soil. So if you look about the natural processes, so the natural processes take about the 500 years of the time period to develop only one inch or almost two centimeter of the top soil. So you can see that how valuable this soil is. So with the help of weathering processes, the different small particles are created and that will create the soil. To create these small particles or the weathering process and the deposition of that, the all processes take about 500 years to develop that. This question was asked in the last examination. If you look at the past paper, the recent paper of the past, the previous year paper, the same question is asked there. How much time is required to develop one inch of the soil? So the answer is nearly about 500 years. Then as we have discussed, the 50% of the materials we have here in the organic matter and mineral form and remaining 25%, 25% in the water and air form. And in this 50%, 45% is mineral and 5% of the organic matter is present. So this is the general classification for the all soils you can say 45 percent of the section is for only the minerals five percent of the organic matter this minerals is what that is inorganic matter 25 percent of the air amount and 25 percent of the water volume amount is there in the soil sample so this can be plus and minus as well according to the different types of soil but this is the general classification of all these matters so this is what soil is Then we have the different soil horizons. So the soil horizons are divided in multiple layers. So horizons means the different layers you can find out in the top soil or in the soil of the earth surface. So the very top layer is called as O layer. Why O layer? O layer means organic layer, which is made up of the humus as well as the all microorganisms present in the soil surface. So this is the very top layer of the soil that is called as the O horizon or O layer. Then we have next the A layer. So A layer is called as top soil. Top soil, which is having the minerals as well as few amount of the humus as well. So in the humus, we have all the decomposed, undecomposed materials, and it is having intense biological activity because of the presence of the microorganisms. Then we have the A top soil, which is made up of the least mineral horizon. So here the leaching process will take place in this particular A layer. So that's why this is leached mineral uh, or the dark origin of this particular horizons. And high content of organic matter is fine. You can find out in the top soil layer. Then we have the alluviation layer. Alluviation layer is of the leached minerals and the organic matter. That matter which is leaching from this particular side. Leaching means going downward. And what? Leaching means for the minerals this word is used. So all the organic material or the inorganic material Whatever is present in the top soil layer, A soil layer that is leached down. And after the leaching down, this all will 
accumulated in this alluvation layer where the leached minerals or the organic matter come and stay in this particular layer so that is the alluvation layer that's why this is called as the e layer so this is the zone of accumulation the meaning of the alluvation is what the meaning of the alluvation is accumulation accumulation of the fine minerals and the mineral precipitates like clay carbonate iron gypsum etc so this leaching will take place to continue and it will go to the subsoil layer b layer where also the deposited mineral or the mineral salts you can find out this is zone of alluvation then this is the b subsoil zone and then we have the c parent rock zone parent rock zone is very partially weathered rock and here partially weathered rock or the rock fragments of the different sizes you can find out and then r is the bed rock which is unweathered parent rock and this is hard bed rock unaltered rock layer you can say so these all are the different soil horizons what type of questions they can ask you the questions they can ask you from the different layers as well and also they can form question based on the arrangement of these different soil horizons so it will start with the o layer go then a layer then e layer then b layer then c layer then r layer so this is the right sequence so o a e b c r so uh, they can ask you about the arrangement of this different layers maybe in ascending order maybe in descending order so these are the questions that can be formed with the soil horizons so i hope this is clear to you then we have the soil classification so soil classification was given by dokuche dokuche is also called as father of the soil science so he gave this uh, he gave this classification based on the soil genesis or how soil is created this is also a type of classification which is very old nowadays we have the classification of the soil order soil family soil groups that all we have right now but earlier in days the dokuche gave the first type of classification of the soil and that is based on the genesis of soil or how soil is created so according to dokuche he created three different types of the soil genesis one is the normal another one is the transition and then we have the abnormal soil development further the above three classification of dokuche changed into following and now the new zones are converted into normal is called as zonal in which red and laterite soil comes transition is called as interzonal in which halomorphic and hydromorphic is a soil comes and then we have the azonal which is coming from the abnormal soil genesis type and here the alluvial type of soil comes in this azonal soil so zonal soil is a kind of mature soil which is developed by 500 years or whatever time requirement was there so that was developed by the process which is generally governed in the atmosphere or in the environment then we have the azonal soil azonal soil is still in the maturing process it is not completely matured or it is not completely uh, as a soil layer you can count it it means out of this 500 years of the development some development is still left that is going on right now that is not completely developed that is the interzonal or transition soil so this is also called as immature soil then we have the intrazonal soil azonal is actually this alluvial sorry uh, by by mistake at all that then intrazonal is actually this transition and this is the intermediate soil from due to the local climate the effect or created there due to that the soil is not completely developed and in azonal which is the abnormal which is a kind of immature soil it is not fully developed and development process is still going on that is the azonal type so i hope these three soil genesis classes are clear to you normal normal is the zonal soil which is normally developed like red soil laterite soil this is a kind of mature soil then we have the azonal azonal is actually abnormal soil which is not completely developed you can say or kind of immature soil and then we have the intrazonal zone that is intermediate soil or transition soil which is formed due to effect of the local climate so these all three are the different soil classes provided by the soil genesis effect and provided by dr chain so i hope this soil classification very basic soil classification is clear to you then in the zonal soil so in the zonal soil means in the normal soil one by one we are going to discuss different types of soil layers so very first type of soil layer that you can find out here in the zonal soil that is the podzol soil 
and this podjo soil is created with the help of podjolization process now what is the podjolization process so let's look at this podjolization process it is the process of alluvation alluvation means the process of leaching you have seen that in the e layer the leaching takes place and this layer is called as alluvation layer why because leaching takes place here so podjolization is also kind of leaching process or alluvation process of the oxides of iron and aluminium and both the oxides of iron and aluminium combinedly called as sesquioxide what is the sesquioxide sesquioxides are the oxides of aluminium and iron which is in the red color generally because of the presence of iron so the leaching takes place of these oxides of iron and aluminium or sesquioxides and also humus part the organic part leached down under the acidic condition where the ph you can find out is 4 to 5 and here removal of carbonates by the organic acids formed by the organic matter and alluvation of the silicon in the surface horizon uh, alluvation means the opposite of the leaching it means the storage you can say or sorry you can say or the deposition you can say so here the deposition of this all material come into the silicon layer in the surface horizon it means in the surface only now this silica is left because generally in the soil what the matters we have we have the organic matter we have the inorganic matter in the organic matter we have the humus and the remaining all organic acids carbonates that all the organic part is under this organic matter then in inorganic matter we have the sesquioxides plus silica content so here you can see the podjolization process in the podjolization process the leaching takes place leaching takes place of what leaching takes place of this humus and all the organic matter as well as the leaching takes place of all the sesquioxides or the red kind of material whatever present in the soil is taking place here so if humus and sesquioxides leach down from the surface of soil so all the humus and sesquioxides come down and created a layer in the sub surface layer or below surface layer in this point now only left material in this particular zone is what silica so only silicon is deposited or alluvated in the surface horizon or in the upper layer of soil so here you can see all the red material as well as black material is leached down so the white color of appearance or light color of appearance is created in this podjol zone so this is called this process of the leaching of humus and sesquioxide to the subsurface layer and only deposition of the silica in this upper layer this process is called as podjolization so abundant organic matter commonly found under the forest cold and humid climate and favorable for the formation of such soils so such soil is generally created in the temperate zone where cold and humid climate you can find out and here a very good amount of rainfall good amount of organic matter find out you can in these zones and this all conditions are favorable for the formation of the podjol soil the alluviated horizon assumes a bleached gray color as i have told you bleached color or whitish color or whitish gray color kind of color is created there because why only silica is left here so no black matter as well as no red color things are present here so this will create a kind of beach gray color which is highly acidic in nature and this siliceous condition is termed as podjol and this is used this term is used for such kind of soil where humus and sesquioxide is leached down to the subsurface layer and only silica is left there so this is the process of podjolization and podjol soils are fully developed soil you can say under the zonal soil category so this is what podjolization is i hope it is clear to you again i am repeating if it is not clear to you two terms we use one is alluvation another one is the illuvation alluvation means leaching and illuvation means deposition so here the deposition or illuvation of take uh, silica takes place in the surface layer and the alluvation the alluvation or leaching process of the aluminium and iron sesquioxides with organic matter takes place here that's why 
the bleached gray color of the material left in the surface layer and this is called as the podzol soil and this process is called as the podzolization so i hope this is clear to you now so this is the first type of zonal soil which we have discussed that is the podzol soil then we have the second type of the zonal soil that is laterite soil what is the laterite soil laterite soil is created with the help of laterization process and the laterization process is totally opposite of the podzolization process or you can say this is inverse process of the podzolization so what will happen here the opposite will takes place here suppose this is your soil layer and here we have the sur surface layer and here the process that removes silica instead of the sesquioxides so all the silica will leach down now and here this silica will create a layer here in the subsurface zone and in the upper layer whatever is left the upper left amount is only sesquioxides so these sesquioxides present in the upper layer leaving a concentrate column or solum so that is here created a red color appearance so that's why this red color appearance is due to the presence of iron plus aluminum aluminum plus iron oxides so the process operates under the rain forest where there is very heavy rainfall you can find out of the tropical areas so laterite soil you can find out in the tropical areas while podzol soil you can find out in the temperate area so the tropical areas are warm and humid and basic parent material are favorable for the such kind of soil which is laterite soil such soil in tropics when massively mixed with the sesquioxides iron and aluminum oxide to an extent of 70 to 80% of the total mass or called called the laterites or latosols which are under the category of oxisols what is this category so generally all the soil types are divided in 12 orders so out of these 12 order, orders one order is oxisols and this laterite soil is under this category of oxisol so that's why the laterites or latosols are also called as oxisol sometimes so here the main thing is that the inverse of the inverse of the a uh, laterization process is podzolization and inverse of the podzolization process is laterization in the laterization in the surface soil we have the red color and in the process of podzolization in the surface layer we have the gray bleached color or the whitish color so that is the main difference between them the laterization process takes place in the area of tropics where warm and humid climate you can find out while the podzolization process takes place in the area of temperate zone where cold and humid climate you can find out so this is the main difference between the laterite soil and the podzol soil and both is type of 